OK, so the question that I'm asking here is, what is a solution to a system of equations? So let's go back and kind of talk about solutions real quick, and then kind of see how that's going to represent in, an equa in a systems of equations. So if I said, you know, x plus 4 equals 10, all right? And if I say, you know, solve this equation, find the solution that makes that equation true. And what that means is the value of x, that when I represent the value of x for this value, I'm going to make the equation true. So what we do is we isolate our variable and use our inverse operations, not multiplying by 6 or subtracting by 6. I think I'm, my brain is kind of going ahead. So I have x equals 6. Then what we can do to ensure that this is the solution, we plug 6 in for x. So we'd say 6 plus 4 equals 10. And therefore, you can see 10 equals 10, and we have our solution, right? Good. All right. So we have an issue, though, is what if I say, y plus x equals 3. Now if they say, find the solution to this equation, well, we have a problem here because there's multiple different ways that we can have in a solution here. We could say, what if 1 plus 2 equals 3? So we could say y equals 2, x, or y equals 1, x equals 2. We could say y equals 2 plus x equals 1 equals 3. That would be a solution. This would be a solution. We could also do 0 plus um, 3 equals 3. And there's infinite many answers for us. So when I ask for what is the solution of y plus x equals 3, we have two variables. So we can't go back and use our inverse operations and just solve for a variable because we're going to have a variable in our solution. So what we need to do is create a system of equations. Well, not create a system of equations, but use a system of equations to solve. So our system, our solution for our system of equation is going to be the value that's going to make all of our equations true. So therefore, we can look at this and say, all right, well, this isn't a system of equations right now. This is only one equation. And since I have two variables, I'm going to want to have two equations. So let's just go with y minus x equals 1. So let's pretend I'm asking you, I say, all right, here's a system of equation. Find the solution. Now, we talked about. On the last one, x plus 4 equals 10. To solve this system of equations, you know, you could solve and you get x equals 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to find the solution by using multiple different methods. But one way that I want you to understand is what ex the solution is the values that for y and for x are going to make both of these equations true. Because when I showed up to the possible solutions just in this equation, we, we figured out there was infinite many, right? It could be 0, 1, 2. For both x and y's, as long as they added up to 3, it would be a solution. But it has to now fit this requirement and fit this requirement for these two equations. So we're going to learn algebraically how to find those values. But I want to graphically kind of show you what your solution looks like. So when we're talking about the solution, again, of a systems of equation, it's the values of your variables that are going to make both of your equations true. Now, if I was to graph this, I can rewrite this in uh, m at y equals mx plus b form. So therefore, I'd go up to 3, 1, 2, 3. Go to 3, go down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. A little bit of a rough line, but there we go. So that is my equation, uh, y, plus 3, y plus x equals 3. And then this one I could rewrite as y equals x plus 1. So I'd go up 1, and then i go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. All right. Now, what you can see is these lines, there's one important point that's very, very important. And that's going to be their intersection. And that intersection is at 1 comma 2. And notice, remember, that intersection is the coordinate point where x and y. And what's important about our solution is we're going to learn how to algebraically solve for x and y. But graphically, you can see that these lines only intersect at one point. And at that intersection, x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2, which we've already proved works for this top equation. We know x can equal 1, y equals 2. That would make this equation true. However, does that work for this equation? If I put 2 in for y and 1 in for x, does that give me 1? And yes, it does. So therefore, these are the only two coordinates that are, or the only two values that are going to be a solution of this system because it, only, because it works for this equation and that equation. And it's represented by the intersection of our two equations. Thanks.